What's good, y'all? Welcome to my review for this week's episode of Sword Art Online Alicization. Man, I gotta say, this week's episode was fucking phenomenal. I love this week's episode. And, excuse me. The ending. That ending. I guess I'll tell, I'll say it. I called it. I called it. I'm pretty sure I said in my review of last week's episode that I said Yujo is going to become an integral knight and he became an integral knight in the, the episode, so. I was right on that. I was right on that. And you guys can definitely expect an episode reaction next week because there is no way in hell I am not going to react to seeing Kirito versus Yujo when he's an integral die. The art is going to be godlike. The voice act is going to be. It's going to be a master class of voice acting. I can't wait for next week's episode. Next week is going to be lit, guys. Next week is going to be fucking fire, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen. So, without further ado, let's get into it. So he starts with off. We got Kirito. He actually has you. He has actually has Alice right on top of him. She's chained up to him, and he's breathing heavily. He's like, <sighs> and then Alice awakens. And he's like, it's just like, wait, wait, Kirito, did you, did you carry me all the way? Which first, how do you do? Do you like get like the? Do you get like the um, the wedges and just like hit him against the wall and just. Like, little bitch, but I gotta say, can we all agree that Kirito is a lot stronger than he looks? Like, this man looks like he has the strength of, like, Brock Lesnar. Or, like, he, the dude's really strong. Like, the man doesn't have much muscle on his body, but the man, like, here is, like, strong. It's, like, as strong as, like, Brock Lesnar or something with the fact that he's carrying Alice and all this way. Like, I'm sure Alice can't be that. I'm sure Alice is pretty heavy weight, especially with all that armor on top of her, plus her sword. Like, that shit gotta be heavy! And yet here Kirito is, and then, you know, he picks her up and everything. And he says, yeah, so, and it was a, it was a hassle, so, a little appreciation. And then she, like, and then she's, like, then she, like, puts her hand over Kirito's head. Uh, she's like, wait, wait, wait. she's like, hey, what are you doing? It's like, and he's like, oh my god, you're drenched in sweat! Oh my god, my, my clothes are stained too! Get away from me! He's like, what are you talking about? And then she sl okay, and then she slams Kito's head against the ground. Okay, he doesn't slam me, she like presses him down. And then it transitions over to the other, which I gotta say, I gotta tell the OP real quick. Yo, guys, I'm not gonna lie, I think this might be my favorite out of all the SAO OPs, at least when it comes to the full song, because I've listened to like the full song of the SAO Alization OP so many times, it's so fucking good, so catchy. You know, it's I love I fucking love the song guys. I love I love that song to death, man. I love that song. Ah, uh, so that might actually this is what that if if it's not my if it's not my favorite, it's my top three. At least. At least my top three. So anyway. Um, <laughs> so, after, so after we get to the legendary OP, uh, Alice is disconnected from Kirito, and she asks him, like, hey, Kirito, where's your comrade? He's like, oh, you mean Yujo? Yes. Where is this Yujo you speak of? If he, if he went, if he used the staircase from the garden, he would have faced out the most, um, the most, uh, I forget the exact words, he was, like, the most, uh, difficult opponent, uh, the most difficult power he's faced, and he's like, like, what are you talking about, what do you mean most, like, pow powerful, I think it was, like, most powerful opponent, and, of course, it is, uh, Bierkoli, I think that's how you say the dude's name, uh, Bierkoli, uh, the guy that usually faced off, uh, two weeks ago, I'm about to say last week, but it was actually two weeks ago, but, yeah, was it two weeks, yeah, 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 it was two weeks ago, anyway, um, so, <laughs> so, um, and so after that, she says, you know, he, he refer, she refers to him as uncle. Like, now, I'm not sure, I, I, we all know they're not related by blood, but I'm pretty sure she just calls him uncle, she views him as, like, an uncle-like figure, uh, probably, or a father figure to her, probably, and she just says uncle. Uh, anyway, um, and so, Kirito is, like, uh, trying to figure out how to use her, so then he does a system called Generate Umbrella Elemental. And then he does, um, like, you know, adhere ob object ID, and then it says the ID, and he's looking for the blue rose sword, which, um, of course, which is usually a sword, and he says, you know, he would never leave it, so she, the thing goes around looking for it, and then it hits the ground and then disappears, he's like, okay, it is below us. So they go downstairs, and right before he does, Alice asks him, like, wait, 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 did you treat my wound, because now she has a bandage over her, over her eye. But you're not saying, I kind of like the bandage over her eye thing, I think that she looks pretty cool. Uh, so, 
So after that, uh, she, um, he says, yeah, I, tr I stopped the bleeding, but my sacred skill can only go so far, so I couldn't fully, you know, heal your eye like that other woman did to use your eye way earlier on in the series, as we all know. Uh, so, you know, she stopped the bleeding, and she says, you know, it still hurts a little bit, and the sight in my right eye is limited, which I'm like, how do you see anything out of your right eye when it's completely covered? Like, can you, like, open it up a little bit and see a little bit like How limited is your sight? In your right eye. Um, so, and then she's like, you know what, I like the pain, you know, I want to keep the pain a little bit longer because, you know, it's proof that I defy, that I'm going to fight the church, you know. And so, they made their way downstairs into the room where Kira, where Yuzho and uh, Bierkuli had their epic duel. They look around for the sword, um, and so, and then, and that, when, when they get in there, they see all, like, of course, the whole place is filled with ice. And, you know, Alice is like, hey, did Yuzho do this? He's like, yeah, she did it. So, she ends up finding Bierkuli's, um, uh, figure, you know, which has now since been turned to stone, uh, by, you know, um, ah, uh, forget the dude's name. The dude's name is, uh, slipping my mind right now. And she goes running over there, and she's like, uncle, 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 and Kirito just got sitting next to her, kind of looking around for the sword. So Alice goes and hugs this, so Alice goes and hugs him, and he's like, this guy just didn't use Joe's attack, he doesn't, like, you know, uh, he doesn't do this. And then, uh, Alice says that, you know, this was of the work of... Uh, Chudelkin, 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 I believe I say the dude's name, uh, the clown, joker, whatever you want to call him, dude, uh, from last week that we saw, or no, not last, yeah, last week, yeah, it was last week, yeah, last week, yeah, yeah, I'm trying to remember, it was last week when that dude made his uh, introduction, it was either last week or the week before, anyway, so, <laughs> so, um, so then she explains how one time, um, he, uh, Miracle told him about how, uh, Jadel can have the authority to turn any, anyone he wanted to into stone, which the, uh, the attack name, or the, the name was, it was Deep Freeze, and, and so she's like, you know, mourning him, and he's like, oh, why would he do this, even if he, well, even if he did have his suspicions, he did not deserve this treatment, she starts tearing up, and then the dude's, um, like, he starts cracking up a bit, which at first I thought the dude was legit going like, actually, he was gonna just gonna just like crack up and just disintegrate and just like you know break off. But nah, he like kind of like struggles to like awaken or try to get some movement in. So he manages. So there's cracks forming all over his eyes and mouth area. Manages to open up his eyes as well as his mouth, and he starts telling, he's like, ah, oh, stop crying, little. Stop crying so much, little one. It'll ruin your good looks. <laughs> he says. And she's like, oh, the you know, uncle is you, and then, you know, there, she's crying, and he's like, ah, I see that you have broken the seal of the right eye, something I have yet to break, I haven't been able to break in over 300 years, which I was like, which, I was like damn, this man's been around for 300 years, goddamn, like, this dude is, like, I guess when you become an entangled knife, your aging is frozen to whenever you will be carrying a table knife, because, yeah, 300 years, man, that man, that man must be like, 350 something then at that point anyway anyway <laughs> uh so um, so um yes uh so after that she's like you know and Daisy's like you know that means that uh, i am happy because and it's like don't cry you know i'm happy because i now know that there is nothing left for me to teach you and he's like no that's not true there's so much more i want to learn from you and you know classic stuff and she's like, don't worry, you are ready. You are ready, little one. And then she looks over, and then he looks over at Kirito. And he's like, hey, brat! You know, just calls him a brat. I'm like, brat, brat, you just met Kirito. Why are you calling him a brat? She's <laughs> like, hey, brat, look after her for me. He's like, I will. And so he kind of just, the guys leave him there. Uh, and then Kirito hears, like, this little ping. Ling, thinks out, and where he looks over it's a usual sword that's kind of engulfed in like this ice cube. Grabs out his sword, breaks it open, and then grabs his sword, and he starts wheeling both of them. And then it hit me like a ton of bricks. The blue rose sword and Kirito's new sword that he has right now look identical to the swords Kirito had in SAO. The first time, you know, when he was doing well, like they look borderline the same. I d I'm surprised I did not notice this sooner. And then Alice says, you know, only crazy, only only crazy, pretentious, high-ranking noblemen 
or dare to wield two strokes, but for some reason, it suits you! And he says, <laughs> you think so? And I'm like, yeah, no surprise there, this my boy Kito was kind of dual wielding a lot back in the day. <laughs> Which, I really hope the dual wielding does come back, because we haven't seen this man dual wield in like, well, actually no, he was dual wielding actually in, um... In um, the uh, Mother Rosario arc, and as well as a little bit in the Ironcrad arc, not the Ironcrad arc, uh, the uh, Excalibur arcs in uh, SCO Season 2. A little bit of it there, too, so, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> so he's been doing a little bit, but, you know, I really hope we do see the return of the dual wheel, but he says, you know, uh, but I still, but there's no way I can wield, I can, uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, wield with two swords, uh, strong with two swords. I'm like, Hey, bro, you have a try. Why don't you try swinging them around a little bit? See how it feels. You know, maybe, maybe it'll work just fine for you. <laughs> Although I did like that little reference outside, you know. Hey, man, you know, do wheels in it. It suits you. It suits you. So anyway. Um, yeah, so he grabs out the sword, puts it back in its sheath. And so they kind of just um, go back upstairs. Uh, where she's like, you know, hey, I've heard this name's uh, Prime Senator Ch uh, Chidenki. W what is he? Like, what are these senators? He's like, to be honest, even I haven't really known, uh, I know exactly what they are. But apparently, from what I know, they're in charge of the Taboo Index. They're on floors 96 and above, which the Knights are prohibited from going into, of course. And they look over the tab index, making sure nobody breaks the code, and they look kind of look over, uh, over everyone to see if they're, you know, you know they're, op they're obeying the tab index and nobody's breaking it or nothing. Um, so, they walk over to, like, this little hallway area with, uh, that has, like, that lead, that has this door, and it doesn't look suspicious at all. And he's like, is this floor 96? And he's like, yep. So, they walk inside, and then, then there's just nothing but these pots. It straight up looked like the Matrix up in here. Right now, where they have all these pots, and first, these, and first, people think that they're dismembered heads, but when you take a closer look at them, they're not. They're just inside these, uh, they're just inside these little pots. And they're the exact same guys we've seen earlier from uh, earlier episodes that came in there and, um, that called, that came in when Kirito faced off against Humbert and, uh, uh, what was the other dude's name? Humber and the other guy, when after Kirito killed them off, or one of them died, uh, you know, the dude says, you know, system accord, like, you know, type of index is broken, you know, you know, target acquired. You know that dude? Th these are the same guys. They're the exact same. And, and so then the siren starts playing, which at first, I thought it was some alarm. I'm sure I was the only one that thought there was alarm. Kirito was like, oh shit, they were caught. They better get, like, they better start running like crazy. They better start running like hell. Uh, but instead, we see these tubes coming out of the pods and the guys put their mouth to it and it's actually food. They are legit eating from these tubes and as you just it was weird to look at and while well, I was watching the episode that was kinda of surreal and a little bit uh, weird to look at seeing these guys just eat from two so and then you just hear all these mumblings uh, like you just hear all these voices going like you know taboo index this taboo index that and, you know they're all here and you can't really make out anything else. You can't really make anything out. Uh, so they kind of just walk, and they hear a noise. They walk inside this, this little hallway area, which leads right into the room. Excuse me. Leads right into, um, uh, Prime Senator, um, um, sh um, Shudelkin, Shudelkin, Shudelkin's room. And he's like, ha ha, that won't do, that won't do, that won't do. And I gotta say, this dude's facial expressions, my god, this dude rivals, like, the, the Super Mario was a Promise Neverland, which I see, which, oh man, Promise Neverland, guys, oof. I mean, I'm not completely caught up, I'm, I'm a week behind because, of course, because I have a virtual premium, so, <laughs> so when I, and I see the dude, uh, and, you know, and, and we see where, um, a sister, I forget, the, I forget her name, the black chick, and just the, the, the just the facial expression she has, and just how much her face moves and, and animates, like, it's ridiculous how many facial expressions and how much detail they're into them in the anime. And here, I think this, these might even be better than how they are in the province Neverland, which is all the expressions uh, Shidelkin, you know, does with his face. It's, uh, it's a sight to behold, like, to, to say the least, man. And actually, um, right before Kirito and Alice go into, like, go into, uh, Shidelkin's room, 
Um, Alice talks about, like, yo, what are these guys? And then Kira comments that they're most likely kidnapped from by the Pontifex that were high level in sacred arts. Then, done, then God knows what happened to them. And they were turned to a surveillance system, essentially called sec, uh, called, uh, Senators. She's like, this is unforgivable. Alice, Alice says, you know, this is unforgivable. They go into the room, and I got, like, oh my god, the facial expression. I know I mentioned this earlier, but the, I cannot get over the facial expression. It's like, oh, this will not do, this will not do. And he's like, what? He's like, they spread it out, boo! And, and, like, he's just moving, and, like, A1, you're like, A1 did a master class of just moving his face and just so many different varieties, getting, like, so many different expressions, like, <laughs> like, Godspeed to the animators, because that sure as hell could not have been an easy job. But you gotta say also, to whoever is the English voice of Trudelkin, Godspeed to you, because you're going to need it, because the Japanese dude, oh my god. Like, whoever is voicing the Japanese has done a phenomenal job, and the English dub, they got their work cut out for them. Guys were cut out for him, whoever is going to voice this guy, because, yeah, the Japanese voice actor did, just, just, uh, did such an amazing job voicing this guy. Anyway. So that's what I was saying. So it's like, you know, this one I'll do, this one I'll do, and then you slowly see this shadow engulf him, and they looks over behind, it's like, oh, this will not do! And then when he looks over, it's Alice, and the look on Alice's face was fucking priceless, man. She just looks at him with the most dead, serious death stare I've ever seen, and just like, and he's just like, oh, shit. and then she grabs, and then he puts down like this little cube, this little like um, sphere device he was using to look at the screen, which was actually uh, he was actually watching what happened with uh, Yujo with the administrator, uh, which happened last week. So this confirms, so this tells us that this episode is happening during last week's episode. These episodes are happening at the exact same. Uh, time. So while Yuzo and Kirito are doing their, or, or Kirito and Alice are doing their thing, Yuzo's over there getting brainwashed by the pond, by the administrator, to you know, pretty much to you know, become an, an, an integral integrity knight. So, uh, so as I was saying, uh, so, <laughs> oh man. So she grabs him by the collar, puts him up there, and she's like, "Oh, oh, Fatty, what are you doing here? You, are, you by definition, by the rules, you should not be up here." And then she looks over and she's like, "Don't you dare call me by that number! I am Alice. That's my name is Alice." And then she looks at the kid like, "Oh, Fatty!" I'm like, uh, "They correct himself. Uh, uh, Night, Alice. This is a rebel from the dark territory. You're supposed to get. Why is he up here?" He's like. Well, yes, he is a rebel, but he is not from the dark territory. He is in the, he's in the same boat as I like. Oh, you plan on betraying me, chat? How dare you, you insolent knights! You're nothing but puppets for us! And you're a new, and you know, the, the new goes on on this rant. It's like, the the church turned us in. And then, and then she just like tells them everything, then what actually goes down with these uh, transformations into uh, people get to become knights. That the... Um, the church turned us into puppets by you by using the synthesis ritual, getting rid of our memories, and then making us believe the myth that we are that we are these divine beings sent from the heavens to, of course, you know, you know, take down the dark territory. He just has this smug smirk on his face. It's like, oh, that is correct. And then, oh my God, this is when his voice acting was absolutely perfect. Like. This is why I gotta say, yo, the English dub, yeah, yo, a a a Aniplex, y'all got your work cut out for you. Good luck to whoever's voicing to the guy. Godspeed, because you got some mighty competition to top, to beat this guy with. But as I was saying, she's like, ah, oh, yes, I still remember the day. Two, it was six years ago when you were in tears, were all, when tears filled your eyes, making, oh, please, don't make me forget the people I <laughs> oh, it was so perfect that I wanted to freeze. I want to freeze you so I can keep that moment. But look at that, so I can put you in my room and look at that moment for all eternity. <laughs> and then I was just like invisibly pissed off at this. And then he goes, he goes forward like you know, you were such, you were such an insolent little brat. You always, ref you would free, you would for refuse actually ever do the, you know, the ritual that you would often that you were such a tomboy. You would often sneak out when you were brought here as a sister in training. You would often try to sneak out and attend the, su the summer festivals. And when it was time for you to actually, you know, do the tramp to do the ritual, you would, you were, you would refuse to him. You were the most insolent brat I ever met. And you know, and so, 
And since she would absolutely refuse uh, to do the ritual, the dude had all the senators pause the automatic stuff and just use them to forcefully pry open the gates to what she held deep, to, held dear, her memories, so of course they can wipe her and, you know, everything happened. And also, one thing I forgot to mention earlier on, uh, we learned, um, we get, uh, we see when, uh, when Alice met the administrator, which she only met him, when, when she only met her once, and as soon as she met her, which is right after she, after the ritual and she lost all her memories, uh, that she, you know, was filled with fear, and that she was like, you know, I was gonna listen to, and she would listen to every order she said and not question anything she had to say, uh, and give her her, give her my everything. She said, because she was so, uh, filled with fear, and she just, uh, you know, of course, listen to everything the administrator said. And so, uh, and then Kirito kind of picks up on this. He's like, what is with this rambling story he's going off to? Is this just a ploy just to keep us in this room? And she's like, well, and I says, well, it seems like you're comfortable with your with your circumstances right now, Jadelkin. Well, I guess it means you won't die with regrets. And then stabs him. She stabs him with a sword. The image was great. I love, like, the little image they had of him just kind of, like, laying on top of the sword. And now in the background was red and everything. It was it was really cool. It was really cool. So, anyway. He, so, uh, so, anyway. So, then after that, he gets, he, like, he, like, kind of, like, brings out this, like, puff. He kind of, like, almost blows up in a weird way. But uh, where this massive puff of red smoke appears. And, you know, uh, Kirito's color in his mouth. Dujo's, uh, not Dujo. Alice is, um... <coughs> coughing and he gets out of there you know he's not all about commands idiots idiots and he gets away and so Kirito so Yujo uh, chases after him Kirito falls suit and they go up the stairs and you hear him say system gone generate loom and then it ends and then he's like he's he's look out for any you know uh, for any surprise decks so they get up um, so they get up to the top so they get up to the top of the staircase look around they don't see him and they probably wonder, like, so where do these stairs lead? Which is, of course, you know, the administrator's room. And then we see somebody slowly descend from this little, from this little, little area on top where, where it leads right into her room. And he hears like, wait, there's more integral, integrity nights up here. He's like, no, this can't be. It's impossible. As we slowly see him descend more and more, Kito looks shocked. And it's usual as an integrity knight. Ah. Called it, ladies and gentlemen. I fucking called it, ladies. And gentlemen. I, I said this last week. If I did, I forgot. If I forgot to say it, well, I'm saying it now. I called it that Yuja was going to become an integrity nut. I called it, but I called it. I called it. Now, and I also saw now. Um, so Kito kind of like you know Yuja is like Kito. He's like trying to talk to Yuja, but I was like, nah, man. You know the Yuja you knew. He ain't there no more. This is integral uh, integrity nut. And he tries to like try and talk to him and try to see if he can get back her his memories because Al says you know you said that there's a way for us to get back memories so let's try that so Kirito tries to draw memories like hey man you know we left two years ago from you know the rural area I'm your master I told you your skills and she and he's trying to like say some stuff that would maybe ring some bells which they don't and he says thank you and Kirito says for what for bringing my sword and they uses the force to grab it which is the same ability uh, Bierkuli had when uh when Yuja fought him a couple weeks back. And so Kirito's so Kirito trying to like deal with this dilemma he has with Fab Yuja and he's trying to like talk to him, trying to get the old trying to get Yuja to come back to him. Uh, but it doesn't. He says, you know, you do why are you fighting? You know you don't know what the administrator why are you fighting for? And he says, I don't need a reason. The administrator gave me what I want for fighting. That's all the reason I need, which let's be honest. Sex, 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 sex. <laughs> you know, that's probably what the, that's probably what she offered him, uh, because you know he doesn't want to be a witch. One thing I forgot to mention also about Yuzo and last week, of course, you guys remember in last week's episode where Yuzo says he didn't want to be lonely anymore. I think another reason why he has loneliness, why he's also lonely, is not only because he doesn't feel loved, uh, which I'm sure that's one of the major reasons. Although that does kind of seem a little weird, because. It looks like Yuzo had a pretty good life with Kirito and Alice, but, you know, we also thought the same thing about Kaneki and his family life with his mom, but we knew that was full of shit and she was abusive towards him, so you never know with these cat things. Uh, but I think it's also because of the cut chapter that was in one of the light novels, which I mentioned before in my reviews earlier about when Yuzo looked over to see if anyone else brought the tap windows and nobody else did, he felt alone, like he was the only person that did this. So I think that's another reason why he's also felt lonely is because of that. Uh, but that, but of course that hasn't, but that still hasn't been brought to him. I mean, I think at this point, 
they're not going to bring it up at all. Uh, at very point, they would have brought it up last week or something along those lines. Oh, no, maybe they might bring it in later. We don't know. So, uh, and then he's like, you know, I don't need a reason, nor do I want to know the reason. You know, he's like, I'm done with this. Let's fight. And, and so he looks at Kirito, you, Kirito looks at Yuja, and he's like, I am the one that taught you all of your sword skills. And then they charge at each other, and I love the cinematography here where they first started with like a close-up of their eyes before they transition to these two just charging at each other, and that's an episode that ends with them charging before they lock swords. Overall, I love this week's episode. The stuff with Alice was great. Uh, the, the voice acting in this episode, my god, was some of the best I've heard in the entire series, honestly. Uh, with especially from uh, beer uh, with a uh, Chudelki, that man was awesome. and the stuff with Yuzo. Uh, that's gonna be great. Now I've also you know you guys said Yuzo looks amazing as Integrity Knight, which also kind of makes you wonder what Kirito would look like as Integrity Knight. I mean, knowing Kirito, the whole his outfit would be predominantly black, most likely. Um, yeah. So, but one one other thing I gotta say, um, I I think Yuzo is probably gonna be the main antagonist. For the rest of the series, or okay, maybe not, but I want to, maybe not the rest of the series, but a major chunk because I don't think this is going to be like a one and done thing. I don't think Yujo is going to face off against Kito once and then you know he's going to get back his memories and everything. I think he'll probably fight him once and after that he might be struggling a little bit because I think someone's going to come in there, whether it's the administrator or somebody else, is going to come in there still Yujo before Kirito can really open up the gates and gain and so Yujo can get better memories. And I think that's going to be a constant theme throughout the rest of the series is going to be Yujo and Kirito, which I think probably the rest of it's going to be Yujo trying, like, dealing with him as a table knight and questioning everything to the point where he uh, finally, when he finally breaks free and he joins back Kirito. I think that's probably going to happen around the later part of the series because I don't think this is going to be a one-and-done type thing. Now, as you guys also know, I said I'm going to do a reaction for this week's, uh, for next week's episode, which I am, because Kirito versus Yujo, that's going to be an amazing fight. Like, I am getting so many Star Wars vibes off of this. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if this ends up being, like, the fight between Obi-Wan and Anakin at the start, at, you know, the end of Episode 3 of Revenge of the Sith. I wouldn't be surprised if it goes something like this. I have failed you, Yuja. I have failed you. I should have known you and Alice were planning to take over. Yuja, the, the, the administrator, is evil. From my point of view, you and Alice are evil. Well, then you are lost. As John Williams' score is blaring in the background. <laughs> Yuja says, this is the end for you, my master. And then Kirito comes up to higher ground. He, and he tells him, it's over, Yuja. I have the high ground. You underestimate my power. Don't try. And Yuja jumps up trying to get to him, but then Kirito just slices him off and he falls to the ground. It's like, you were the chosen one. It was said you would destroy the church, not join them. Bring power to the force, <laughs> not leave it in darkness. You were my brother, Yuja. I loved you. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I am having too much fun with this man. I am having too much fun with this man, man. Although, in all fairness, let's be serious. This next week's going to be fucking awesome, man. Anyway, but with all said and done, love this week's episode. Hyped as hell for next week. And yeah, look forward to Tsunami, because Tsunami is starting up in a couple of hours. We've got more SEO authorizations, so I can't wait to see more of the English dub of that show. Anyway. So overall, we get this week's episode 9.5 out of 10, guys. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you did, subscribe if you're new. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, if you like it. Links down in the description box below. And as always, come back for more. See you guys next time.